Swedish central bank has left its key interest rate unchanged and signaled that it will wait until some time next year before raising rates. The bank wrote that difficulties in resolving the public finance crisis in Europe have led to increased uncertainty regarding the future. In Sweden, growth is expected to be slightly weaker in the coming period. And so to tell us how much weaker, I'm pleased to say I'm joined now from Stockholm by the Swedish Central Bank Governor Stefan Inves. And of course, our economics correspondent Linda Yu is with us to join in the conversation. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Mr. Inves. And if I can start by asking you about your policy, keeping the benchmark rate unchanged at 2% for the second consecutive meeting now. Just talk me through the rationale behind this decision and what might be a catalyst for a change in rates. Well, it's a reasonable thing to do because uh, the growth rate is coming down and it has come down considerably compared to the way it used to be a year or year, a year, year, year back. And also given all the uncertainty that we see around, around us in Europe and given that we are a large exporter, that affects what's going on in, in this economy. And for that reason, it takes a bit of inflationary pressure out of the system as a whole. And so there's no need really to raise the policy rate not right now. Can I ask you, uh, Governor, about the Swedish krona? Now, what is, are you trying to signal uh, a signal as well about the Swedish krona, about how you are, don't want to see it strengthen, perhaps, in this kind of environment? No, we weren't really signaling, signaling anything in particular when it comes to the krona and the exchange rates, because we've had a floating exchange, exchange rate now for a long, long time. Yeah. And there is sort of nothing particular about this, this particular decision-making decision -making point. The, the corona is what it is. It's hard to make exchange rate projections. And, and we, are, we, are, we are just doing monetary policy the way we always have done it. And Mr. Ingvax, if I can get your thoughts, your reaction then to the agreement that we had out of Brussels this morning. Uh, we have a bank recapitalization figure of 106 billion euros. Uh, we have Greek debt write-downs of 50 percent and a, a boost to the EFSF. Uh, to the tune of a trillion euros, are you? Does this make you more optimistic about the debt crisis going forward, about the economic recovery in the region, if you like? Mm, well, what this brings is um, what I'd like to call gradual clarity, and that helps. That's very, very helpful. But on the other hand, just to bring, bring clarity about the measures, uh, that's only half of it, because eventually you actually have to do things, and that remains to be seen. So. It's definitely a move in the right direction, so let's hope that this is on the right track. Governor, can I ask you, we are still looking for details about the bank recapitalization plan. You are, of course, the new chair of the Basel Committee. Do you think that what you've seen in terms of the recapitalization plan actually hits all of the key points? Well, I mean, this is, it, it makes sense to, to, to reflect on how much capital can you find in, very, in European banks in, in various countries in Europe. And it also makes a lot of sense to actually go through a recapitalization exercise. Uh, but that exercise, doing that is a very uh, European undertaking. It's a completely different matter in the Basel Committee to, to have the uh, entire world moving into Basel III. And it, it will take many years to do that. So now we're talking about a six-month time period and something, something that really needs to be done in a European t uh, context. A six month time period, as you say, and I, I suppose there have been concerns about the way the banks may respond to uh, tier one capital ratio of 9%, some would say, in a potentially, well, a much shorter space of time, if you like, than that that has been requested of the Basel Committee. So I'm just wondering how difficult it's going to be for states to ensure that banks don't do it through, say, shrinking assets and cutting back on lending and therefore having a, a negative impact on the overall economy. Well, first of all, what, what is being discussed now is a purely European matter. So it, it's completely outside what the Basel Committee, the committee is doing. In terms of when you want to do these things, it's actually up to the banks themselves. And if the bank owners feel that it would make sense, make sense to recapitalize immediately, everyone is free to, uh, to do so. So that's not much, a, much of an issue. Eventually, actually, everybody in Europe will be better off if banks are well capitalized compared to if they are not well capitalized. So at the end of, at the, end of the day, when the dust has settled, people will find that this is a very, very sensible measure. Can I ask you about Swedish banks? Of course, Swedish banks were under pressure a couple of years ago when Eastern Europe came under pressure. Now, there are some signs that this recapitalization effort in Western Europe could lead to a credit crunch again in Eastern Europe. How well positioned are the Swedish banks this time around? They are actually very well positioned because uh, what I call the Baltic saga has pretty much been taken care of. And there are 
credit losses aren't really coming from that side presently. Swedish banks are also very well capitalized compared to many other, many other banks in Europe. And Swedish banks, given their high capitalization, do not really have issues when it comes to financing. And that means that our banking sector is in a very, very good position when it comes to supply and credit in various parts of the world. Mr. Ingves, if I can ask you, you said that there are still many details, more that needs to be done with respect to the agreement in Brussels, details that need to be worked out. How concerned are you about political, about negotiations essentially being held up, about implementation risk, if you like, as a result of political infighting, political difficulties? Well, that's always, that's always an issue, and that remains to be seen. I mean, eventually the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and it's one, one thing to agree on things. It's a different thing to, to actually deliver. And we're talking here about delivery over many years to come because you don't fix a fiscal problem all that, all that easily. And that means that uh, countries with these issues will have to stay on the narrow path for many years to come.